bam, bam, ba, down. Theme song. So you want to play Crossroads in, do ya? Well, get ready to have a lot of fun. And also, you are in luck right now because all of these wonderful people that have been playing the game with me are also commenting on the videos that I post with some great tips. So first of all, a big thank you to this community of people that have been playing the game and uh, teaching me how to play it. Uh, and uh, below, if you check the comments of this video, they're probably also going to add stuff that I miss making this little video. So without further ado, here are 10 tips when playing Crossroads Inn. We're getting started here in a new tavern, and as you'll see, it is actually uh, quite snowy on the ground. That's because I'm making this tutorial uh, during December, and they just did their winter update, which is... Uh, it looks pretty fun. So, tip number one, you don't need to place your pallet, uh, the, the very first thing you really should place when you build your inn, you don't need to place it near the road, which also we can't really see right now. You can actually place it uh, in the back of your uh, tavern area because when they things get delivered, they'll still just spawn over here on the pallet. They, you, you don't need anybody to actually physically drop them off. So you might as well do that while you build your rooms. And tip number two, when building rooms, you can always reassign them later. So I built a main hall here, that's good. But back here, I accidentally built an empty room. Whoops, I'm gonna turn that into storage right here. All you have to do is click on the room info and you can change your room as you see fit. So did you build a nice room and then you accidentally put too many beds into it? And uh, now you're like, whoops, instead of a private room, I should have made that a guest room. No worries, you can do that right here. All right, tip number three is a bit more of an opinion, but I would say my tip number three is, depending on what your fame allows you to do, so you might be playing a, uh, a hard one or a challenge that doesn't allow enough fame to even have people eat, so you don't really need a kitchen right away. But here's my opinion on this one. So I'm playing hard right now, and uh, I don't really think you need many different types of rooms. I like having a storage room, but check it out. This is now my kitchen. And they're still gonna store stuff on these shelves because the shelves act like places to store things. But now we also have an active kitchen. So let's just do two in one for now. Oh man, they're really good at cleaning. But since I'm talking about storage, always make sure you have the right items. So you're gonna need a wood shed to store wood and you're gonna need barrels to store all your drinks. And if you have two types of drinks, you're gonna need two types of barrels and that's it, I'm out of money. I still wanna get some tables in my inn. So right away, I'm gonna grab a little bit of a loan, but I don't necessarily recommend getting a loan right off the top. And if you do, don't get a big one. You're gonna have to repay it, sure, and right now in the design of the game, you can kind of get away with not paying it for a bit, even past the 20 days, but at some point, they're gonna patch that out, and it's also just gonna stress you out the whole time you're playing the game, dog. You don't wanna get stressed out, but I have no tables, and I haven't even opened my inn yet, uh, so I needed to take out a bit of a loan. So let's decorate this place a little bit now. So just to make sure I can have a place for customers to sit and eat and be happy, I'm gonna place down a bunch of tables. And then I'm gonna place a bunch of chairs around like so. When the table goes yellow, that's how you know that your chairs or your stools or your uh, benches are actually connected to the table. And what that means is, well, it's easy for customers to find those uh, spots, but also when you click and move the table, you can actually click and move everything. Don't just click the chairs, but click the table and all the chairs and whatnot come with you. And since we're uh, decorating a little bit, I'm gonna move on to tip number four. You can actually hold down control to move things off the grid. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, we've all heard about Q and E to rotate things, sure. But by holding down control, you can not only place things off the grid, you can also rotate off the grid. And for a medieval tavern, I feel like this is pretty important. This gives it a much more taverny look and you can actually shove things a little tighter together than maybe they would want to go like that. 
Now, it definitely gives you a nice tavern look, but it can cause some animation problems uh, and some intersect issues with stairs or with stuff on the other side of the wall. If you have something like a decoration or something a little too close, let's try to hang something here. Why don't we hang one of these Christmassy decorations? Like this holiday decoration number one. <laughs> so right now I can't even get it on that wall, but if I hold control, so let's put that Christmassy decoration up above this uh, window that's here for some reason. Whoops. Oh, well, that looks nice. You can see into the kitchen, I guess. Now, I uh, could place it like this. And sometimes uh, paintings and stuff will float a little bit off the wall. So you hold down control just so you can get them in the wall just a bit more. And that looks quite nice. Speaking of holding down control, uh, there are a, actually a lot of uh, really useful hotkeys. So right now I'm in furnish mode. If I want to get back to play mode so I can open my tavern, I'm going to hit control P. And now it runs the game. It gets going again. Sometimes if you're in furnish mode and you just click close on that, well, you're still paused. And if you go back to play, that's how you get going. So control P is play mode. Looking good, looking good. Let's open this tavern. You can also hit Control M to get to your map, and that's where you can find cool items. That's where you can go visit Untremarche or Sambria, and you can find your cool recipes or look for ingredients. This is also where you want to do your ordering around. Now, if you hit Control P, you'll go back to the play menu. If you hit Control B, you will go into build mode. And some of you might notice that my walls are staying up. Well, that's because I also hit control one. If you hit control one, it'll toggle between collapsing your walls or keeping them up all the time. I prefer it this way because I like looking down into my, my little tavern dwellers like they're little ants in my box, my little ant box of taverns. <laughs> On top of that, if you want to take a good screenshot, then you're going to hold down Control 2. And it, not only does it take the mouse away, so right now the mouse is, I can move it around, but I can't see it. It also takes the heads up display away. And now you are in perfect, especially with Control 1, perfect screenshot mode. Ah, oh, look at this little tavern. Off to a good wintry start. And we'll hit Control 2 to bring it back. Part six is a two-part tip because I forgot. <laughs> Always remember, you've got to add stuff to your menu. Otherwise, you can't sell it. Oops. So I bought some wine and some lager, so I'll sell that. And I need to get some sausages in, uh, so I'll add that to the menu. And you can add a couple other things, too, based on whatever menu items you have. But be sure to go to the map and find more menu items. But be careful, because that's going to send one of your cooks away, and it's going to cost you 200 bucks. Now, here's the tip that I was going to tell you for tip number six. You can go down here to your warehouse window, and then click on a thing you want to keep an eye on, like wine. Instead of coming back here all the time, why don't you just click this little eye, and then it's down here. So click on any of the supplies that you want to keep an eye on, you silly fools. And I recommend that you keep plates and mugs and candles, which I notice I haven't even bought yet, uh, down here as well. Because those things you will run out of without even noticing. And all of a sudden, you're not making any money anymore. You silly fools. For tip number seven, we are visiting my main four-story inn uh, just to see a couple of different things that I've got going on here. Uh, if you want to see how this thing was built, make sure to check out the other videos in my channel. Now, if you are trying to control your uh, guest's satisfaction right down here so that you can get more fame points... Oh, I'm about to get a new fame point! <laughs> then you want to make sure that they are leaving happy. But... If you make your items too cheap, well, you're not making any money. So make sure that you are careful with how much uh, you price goods. Things like this bread soup is actually going to make people upset with your inn. But if you pull the price back just a little bit, now they're only going to be okay with your inn. So if you take something like, uh, let's say, rolled pancakes and you have the price nice and low just to where it starts to become a smiley face down here. Well, now the type of patron that orders that food is actually going to be quite happy. So one way that I've balanced this game, and you don't, you know, this is more of an opinion again, maybe, uh, is my peasants are actually being charged quite a lot for stuff. So they're only going to be a little happy, but, you know, 
16% of the people coming in here are peasants. Now that's how I make sure to keep making some cash. And of course I'm uh, charging a lot for townsfolk food and, and some traveler food, but I've got a lot of outlaws coming in. 30% are outlaws. So I figured I would charge them prices that actually make them happy. So every outlaw that I uh, make satisfied on the way out means I'm about to get closer to my fame point. Uh, but then, by having some other people that are uh, not so satisfied, well, that just means that uh, I'm still making some good cash off of them, which is also pretty important. Tip number eight, buy in bulk, and then take a look at the average price of the thing you're buying. It is so easy to get behind in your cash flow if you just buy what you need when it's an emergency, because check it out here. Everything you buy, it's gonna cost you 100 bucks every time you wanna transport any goods to your tavern. So if I just bought two sets of 10 candles, it still costs me 100 bucks to do the shipment. But if I buy a bunch of candles, same hundred bucks. You can also do these things like express or protection, but I don't really use those so much uh, as at the time I'm playing it, they haven't put in too much danger into the shipping. Ugh, dangerous shipping. So I'm just gonna make sure that I'm buying enough stuff, even if I don't really need more mugs right now. I know I will later, so it's not that big of a deal to buy it now. Let's get some wine and some more lager. And just as a quick aside bonus, make sure you ch tick this button if you want to see just whatever's being used in your menus. Now, when you do that, though, it's going to be hard to see things like candles and compare the prices. Uh, but they aren't included in any menu items, so I won't show them. But this is a great way if you're just trying to catch up on all the stuff that you're trying to offer your in people. And then, hey, if you've got a couple extra economic gossips lying around, why don't you haggle that sucker down? That just saved me another 116 bucks. Very smart with my money. Tip number nine, nice rooms make for happy guests, but the current style of the room uh, doesn't really seem to matter that much, or at least right now. So go ahead and make yourself a Sambrian room. Or maybe an Untermärchen room like this. Or even make an outlaw-themed bar. As you can see here, I've got uh, travelers and peasants and noble people, and also n no outlaws in here. <laughs> so they don't really mind what the room is styled as, just as long as it's nice and clean, which this is not very clean right now, so medium priority. Uh, I better make this high priority. There, that'll get it cleaned. Or perhaps a salle francaise, a bit of a, a Yorvalian room? Or why not just make a room that's a little bit of a total mishmash of stuff? As long as it looks nice because you want to be happy, and as long as it's a decent star rating, I could do a couple things here to make it five stars, then they're going to be pretty happy with it and they're going to want to stay here. Note that this one is traveler themed, but I tend to get peasants, travelers, nobles staying in here all the time, just like I do in La Salle Francaise. And number 10 for my final tip. This is again a sort of a design opinion, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Place redundancies in your designs, especially with things like stairs. Uh, sure, you can have multiple doors into rooms. I didn't really do that too much, but if you have lots of ways up and down, lots of ways to navigate inside your tavern, that's gonna go a lot better. It's gonna create less bottlenecks, of course, but it's also gonna help for if you do something accidental, like in this one here. So I placed my staircases here, very good, very good. And then when I needed to place a staircase from here up to the next floor, I accidentally placed it on the floor below because I had removed these stairs to fix something else. So now I can't put the floor back in here for some reason. And I suspect it's because I love taking things and control moving them kind of off the grid. So I ended up just putting these banisters here and made this area just like a cute little secret landing, for now at least. I could also take all of this out and expand this room. Uh, I could also take all these stairs out, take these banisters out, take all the items out around it, and uh, I might even need to take out the floor above or something, I'm not sure yet. Uh, but if I wanted to fix it, it's gonna be quite a lot of work. And if I needed to do that and didn't have a lot of money, then it would cost a lot of money trying to fix and place rooms and then delete stuff. 
uh, all the while, all those extra floors are not available to me, and the patrons are up here stuck, and the staff is stuck, and they're starving, and they're getting mad with you, and it gets out of hand. So it's good that I have a nice redundant staircase here, because that covers my dumb mistake over here. Now, yes, to get to the fourth floor, I only have one staircase up here, and then down this hall into my storage room into this kitchen and then into my secret outlaw tavern but uh i mean it's not very redundant but like what do you want me to do okay it's the fourth floor i don't need that many stairs to get to the fourth floor but i do need them to get to my third and my second floor so it's a good tip and finally just a bonus tip for you guys who are about to start playing this game just have fun with it out there, eh, bud? And you know what? Because it's here and it's the beautiful winter time, uh, why don't we decorate this place with some Christmassy stuff? So what do we have here? First of all, we definitely need to get some wreaths. Oh, can we put this over the door, maybe? Let us. Let us. Holiday portal? Holiday portal? That's, that's not a thing. Oh, I see. It has to be outside. So maybe this is the nice holiday entrance uh, to our cemetery. <sighs> Just like that. Delightful. And let's make sure we have a holiday structure, too. So everyone knows uh, that it's Christmas. Or, sorry, holidays Where I guess we just leave things of meat and apples and stuff just out? Oh, that's fine. An everyday post. I don't really know what that is, but I like it. Somebody in the comments below tell me what an everyday post is, but it almost looks like a sign post for, like, directions or something. Yeah, that looks like a thing. Everyday strings. I wonder if that's just the name of the holiday in this game. <laughs> it's everyday. Merry everyday, everyone. Somebody's going to tell me that that's actually some sort of German cultural thing, and I'm going to look like a real fool. But if I do look like a real fool, at least I'm going to look like a real Christmassy fool. What is that? Another holiday decoration. Doesn't quite... Oh, it almost fits. Oh, uh, yeah. Control move, baby. Eh, that's only okay there. So let's put that... I wish we could put this over the... Oops, I wish we could put it over the fireplace like that. But I imagine it's a pretty wild fire hazard. Oh, I keep unclicking it. Come on. Let's go over the windows, maybe. That's fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotta keep it symmetrical. There we are, looking good so far. Now what's this, a holiday decor, just a decoration. Some stuff on the things here. Looking good so far. Now, what else, what other items do we have? Snowman. Do you want to build a snowman? Do you want to build or um, whatever this beast is? <laughs> oh my gosh! Ah! What is that? Disgusting. Let's place five of them. I don't really have a lot of uh, free placement room outside. Oh yeah, there we go. Perfect. There, and let's get... Oh, just a classic snowman. I think... Uh, is it weird? Is it, like, insensitive to put a snowman in a cemetery? It'd probably be weird to put this guy in the cemetery. Having a little fight. Eh, let's at least put him over here watching the cemetery. <laughs> That's pretty creepy. <laughs> I used to be alive, too. In the summer, I'll die again. Oh, a wreath. Let me put that on the door. Let me put it on the inside of the door. If I got rid of some stuff, I could probably place it over these banners here. And it's a pretty decent room bonus. Let's sell these. Let's see if we can't get these on. Yeah! Oh, now that's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm... Oh, I don't like that at all. Can I just not get it a little closer? I mean, that's... You know what I mean? That's what I want to see. Uh, it's just because of the door opening. And, okay, well... That's the best I can do in that spot there. And I think... Uh, let's see. I think our the hallways were always quite drab. So they're going to do well with some decorations. Especially right here. 
whatever that is. An interesting woven sort of broken stick thing. Simple folk believe that more that uh, that the more symbols, the more luck the decoration will bring. Okay, okay. So you got, yeah, yeah. You know what? It doesn't look weird. I agree. <laughs> Let's get a wreath here too. Let's get a wreath here. Make sure it's centered on that door panel, wall panel, whatever. There we go. Yeah, let's just mess up this room with wreaths. Just funk it up. What's this? Holiday structure one, and then the age-old nemesis of the snowman. The, str the straw man. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. All right. Put the straw man over here. Gazing at them. <laughs> and the straw man has... A holiday structure behind her, him, her, whatever. Looking good. So now we've got our Halloween stuff and we've got all these winter structures down. Let's do a bit more decorating on these uh, in the halls here. Uh, the This hall is pretty busy, so maybe just one. Let's put another one of those uh, weird holiday symbol decorations, uh, which I'm sure it means something to them. Okay, well, that is just looking adorable. I'd say we have a really nice looking holiday themed in here with just a couple of the items here. <laughs> and whatever that is, yeah, let's get away from there. Well, I hope that just like this gentleman enjoying this fine plate of green slop that you guys also enjoy your holidays. And we'll see you all in the next video.